Welcome to our service on Sunday the 14th of June. We've now reached ordinary time in the church calendar, so that's why I'm wearing my green stole. Um, and I've been thinking how strangely the time has been moving. We began um, the lockdown in Lent and we've travelled through Lent, Eastertide, Ascension Tide, Pentecost, and we finally made it to ordinary time, a way of marking the seasons. I always think ordinary time is a bit of an unfair name for it. It sounds boring ordinary, but ordinary is actually probably what we're all longing for, really. But I like to think that in ordinary time, what we're thinking about is God's faithfulness, that no matter what we're going through, whether it's um, a happy time, a celebration time or a sad time, God is faithful. And I think that's what ordinary time is about as we grapple this new way of worshipping together. So as we go through the service today, uh, join in with the words in yellow as usual, and you'll find that the service feels a little bit more like it's got back to normal um, because we're in ordinary time. And so many of the prayers that are used in the service will be very familiar to you. I like that expression that C.S. Lewis used of the liturgy being like a comfortable pair of slippers that you're slipping back into. So I hope that you feel comforted today by our service. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. So speaking of familiar prayers, we say these familiar words as we come into God's presence. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's take a moment's quiet before we confess our sins together. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. And we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So again, we come to sing the Gloria together. If you repeat the words after me. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory 
to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. So let us pray the prayer for this week, what we call the Collect. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love, and to walk in ways of wisdom, that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. A reading taken from Exodus chapter 19. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. They camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from Romans chapter 5 beginning at verse 1. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to his grace, in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, 
Proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand on any railway station in rush hour, and you can see the harassed and tense faces of people all around. As the next announcement comes over the tannoy, explaining that further delays are expected to their train. To many, this can only mean anxiety and frustration through missing train connections, missing appointments or late for work yet again. Perhaps that is an unfair place to pick, but it is noticeable that the stress and conflicting demands and expectations and the relativism of our society, which place huge pressure on individual choice of action, combine to make peace of mind a yearn for impossibility for many. Today's readings speak quite a lot about hope and being at peace with God and oneself. In our passage from Exodus, we find the people of Israel being given the hope of becoming the treasured possession of God, of being a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, if they are prepared as a whole com community to work with their God rather than against him. Hope is an intriguing word. It's a mixture of desire for something, an expectation of getting it. If either of those is missing, it isn't hope, and if either is overbalanced, there is no peace. But when you have both in balance, hope makes you very happy and contented, and this will bring peace. In Paul's letter to the Romans, we are told we now have peace with God, which may differ from peaceful feelings such as calmness and tranquillity. When we are reconciled to God, there is the inner feeling of peace, which is beyond all measure. There is no more hostility between us. We are not divided by our sin. Our Gospel tells us that Jesus made a tour of all the towns and villages, teaching in synagogues and heralding forth the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and every illness. Here, in one sentence, we see the threefold activity, the essence of the life of Jesus. First, Jesus was the herald bringing the message of the King, the proclamation from God, his Father. Secondly, Jesus was the teacher, not only bringing the message, but also showing how the message was to be put into practice by showing how his message brought life. Jesus not only told the good news, he showed us how life could be. And thirdly, Jesus was the healer, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, and comforting the sorrowful. He turned the words of Christian truth into deeds of Christian love. When Jesus saw the crowds of ordinary men and women, he was moved by compassion. Compassion by the world's pain. Compassion for the sick. Compassion for the blind. Compassion for those in, in the grip of demons. And compassion for those who suffer from hunger and loneliness. We know all about hunger from the third world countries by the media appealing for help. But here in our own country, do you know that there are over 2,000 food bank centres now providing food for people in poverty and requiring food? And as regards loneliness, 
in these last months. The pandemic has seen many people suffer from loneliness, divided from their families and friends in isolation. In recent months, we heard of or maybe witnessed great deeds of compassion shown to others in this COVID-19 pandemic. We hear of the key workers who are helping others by going the extra mile, by caring for people in hospitals and care homes. Volunteers visiting people isolated in their own homes with deliveries of essential food and other needs. There may be many more unsung heroes who simply just quietly get on with the job in hand. But compassion is still alive and how good does that feel to give it or to receive it? Back to our Gospel reading, what we have to understand is that Jesus could not teach everyone. The harvest is too great and the people are many. Jesus said to his own disciples that the harvest is great but the workers are few. Therefore pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers for his harvest. Here is one of the most characteristic things Jesus ever said. Jesus saw the crowd of the ordinary men and women as a harvest to be re reaped and to be saved. Here we have one of the great Christian truths and one of the supreme Christian challenges. The harvest will never be reaped unless there is enough helpers to gather in the harvest. Jesus realised he needed helpers. He had already called his twelve disciples. These men were from all different walks of life. Men with different employments, fishermen, tax collector and others. Men with strengths and weaknesses who were carefully selected by Jesus from the crowd for their faith, commitment and loyalty. We also are called by Jesus and invited not only to hear his message, but also to live the life of that message and put into practice by our actions the message itself of love, to love one another, our families, friends and neighbours and strangers. As Christian disciples our work of mission goes on, whether it is by our, by our financial giving for mission abroad or whether it's here on the own front, helping those less fortunate than ourselves. However, the work is all for God, wherever it is, and with the grace of God, we are able to do the work of God, and he will see that we have all we need to complete the task. There is a great harvest out there, and we are invited to reap that harvest as God's disciples by proclaiming the good news and showing by our, our actions of concern for others with true Christian love. We are called simply to love people into the kingdom of God, where they can know the joy and hope of being at peace with God and oneself. Amen. And so we declare our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sovereign God, you are the giver of life, the root of all our being, the creator of the ends of the earth, of all that is and shall be and has been. Loving God, you give purpose to our lives, a sense of meaning to every day, a mood of hope as we look to the future, an inner confidence whatever we may face. And so we praise you. Living God, you are with us always, imparting strength, giving guidance, offering comfort. And so we adore you. Saving God, you have come to us in Christ, revealing your goodness, demonstrating your love, expressing your care. And so we honour you. Gracious God, you are the giver of more than we ever could ever deserve, granting your constant blessing, surrounding us with your unfailing love, providing for our deepest needs. And so we thank you. Almighty God, receive our praise, our thanks, our worship, for we bring it to you in great, grateful response to all your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Caring God, we pray for all those who are going through physical, emotion, emotional or mental illness, especially the problems caused by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And we pray especially at this time for Reverend David Hull, and his wife, Chris. We pray for all doctors, nurses and healthcare workers as they seek to bring health and comfort to so many. We think of those in hospital or at home that are ill with the virus. May they regain their strengths through the quality medical care. And we pray for those grieving the loss of a loved one, both recently and whose anniversaries fall at this time. In a moment of quiet, we bring those known personally to us before you now, Lord. Please give relief to those in pain, friendship to those alone, and reassurance to those in doubt or distress. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, help us to walk the journey to which you have called us, keeping faith in your saving purpose. When we grow weary, revive us. When we go astray, direct us. When we lose heart, inspire us. Keep us travelling ever onwards, trusting totally in your guidance. And as we move into this coming new week, Help us to remember our Saviour's words. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven is near. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us gather all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so now we come to our act of spiritual communion. You may wish to change your posture, you may wish to kneel as if you're kneeling at the altar rail. You may wish to hold your hands out with your palms facing upwards to receive the Holy Spirit. In union, dear Father, with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit that I may be filled with your presence. I will leave a time of silence for you to pray this prayer yourself. Let us pray. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen.
Let's bow our heads to receive God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for worshipping with us this week. Next Sunday is the Patronal Festival for St John the Baptist, so there'll be an extra special um, online service to celebrate that festival. And our guest preacher next week will be the Archdeacon, Carol Coslett. See you next week. Bye. During this difficult time when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church. Meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship. Loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable. And caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity. A generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, here's how you can help.